about life groups here and people who lead life groups, probably 25, 30 people who do that. We talk about people behind the scenes. We have people who are dedicated just to handling the finances of our church, uh, a board of men, women, probably a dozen of them, who, who love spreadsheets and talk cross-collateralization, which I can't, but they love these kinds of things and they care for our church in that way. Uh, we also have elders who meet, and uh, they are the shepherds of this church. Uh, there's uh, a great group of men and godly men who love the people here and want to lead in that way. And, uh, and whether it's a men's ministry or the long list of things you just heard, you're probably like, my goodness, get on with this announcement, right? There's a lot of people and a lot of things to get involved with and to be a part of the church. And even in the bulletin you have, there's even a place where you can open up and you can see how you can currently get involved. Uh, maybe something stuck out to you and maybe you see an opportunity and you would love to be a part and, and help out in that way. Well, last week we started this, this series uh, that we're calling The Church, a Blueprint. And uh, the blueprint of what does it look like to be the church. And as you came in, everybody got a photo or some kind of piece of paper. Pull that out. And let's, let's look at that for a second. And uh, hopefully you got a piece. And um, did anybody, as you're looking at it, you're probably like, I can't even see how far away my bifocals can not get on that. But did anybody get a picture of themselves? I'm just curious. What are the odds, right, of someone getting a picture of themselves? You did? Part of a group. Oh, okay, good. Well, I look at my picture here, and um, I, in this, it looks like there's a VBS going on. There's worship on the lawn in one corner. I can tell by the baptism tank. I have Derek and Ann McKinney in this picture. And, uh, and so every one of you have a picture. And, and really, as you look at the picture, the individual picture tells a story. And maybe it tells a story of a couple. Maybe it tells a story of an event. Maybe it tells something unique and special. And, and those are good stories. Uh, this is a story of, in this story here of Derek and Ann. We could go to them and find out more about who they are and, and what's going on in their life. But let me ask you this. What if this little photo here was actually part of something much bigger what if it was just part of a, a bigger story that is going on? And what if that story were actually God's story? His story of what is, is happening. And when we say God's story, it's the story that we know in Scripture. It starts in the book of Genesis. And it, it starts there in the beginning. And it even started before that because God has always been, right? And it then tells the story of of man and how man was created and how man fell and was sinful. And the story continues of God redeeming his people. And eventually he gets to the part where he's redeeming his people through his son, Jesus Christ. And then the story continues. And we talk about 2013 and how the story is still continuing today. And God is still redeeming his people. And the vehicle he is using to do that is his church. His church, his story, God's story includes the church. And then we know the story to continue into one day when God will come back and make all things right. His son will come back and reign and there will be an eternal life for those who know him and love him and have trusted in him. It's a wonderful story and it is God's story. So what if this picture, this little picture was actually part of something much bigger that is going on in our own community right here in our own church? And it is. And the wonderful thing about this little picture is that it actually is a part of a bigger picture. And I don't know if you can see it off to the side here, but this morning we are, we are taking these pictures and we are building a bigger picture and uh, not so much the story of what's on this individual picture, but what is the story that God is doing? And we're using a mosaic to do that. And so all of these pictures, uh, these little pictures, when you put them together, are now going to tell a bigger story and a bigger picture will appear. And so we are building on that this hour too. And so you're here the second hour and even the next hour, we'll see it more fill in and be complete. But as I was thinking about this, uh, there's a couple of verses that came to mind in the book of Romans. And uh, these verses, Romans 12, 4 and 5 say this, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. 
So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. It's a beautiful picture of what God is doing. You see, it's not about this individual picture. It's not. You know, it's, we see that we are, we are, though many, many individual stories, many things that God is doing. Though we are many, the next part is really exciting. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. And that is the exciting part of the story is that us as individuals, we come together to be a part of something that is much bigger. And it's really telling the story of what God is doing and how he is going to use his body here at 1407 for his glory and what that story means to reach out to the community around us and to tell the story of the gospel. Though we are many, we come together as one. And then Paul adds this phrase, which I think is very interesting. Not only are we are one body, he could have ended the phrase there, though we are many, we are one. But then he adds on this, and individually members one of another. I've been pondering that phrase all week. What is he trying to communicate by that? And individually members of one another. And what he's trying to say is, is that not only do you come and be a part of this thing of one body, but now there is a, a mutual relationship with the other members that you are with. It's not like you come in and come out. Come in, come out, come in, come out. No, it's you come in and now you start to spread and you have this horizontal relationship with all of the other pictures, all of the other people around you. And we are members of one another. And so it's not about coming and we get what we want and when we leave. We come, we get what we want, then we leave. And I know that in the American church, it's very common to come and get and leave. Get, leave, get, leave. This would have been a foreign concept to the Apostle Paul. Because it was about coming and being a part and members of one another. I've heard people say at different times, some of the best Christians I know aren't a part of a church. And I think and I wonder, really? How would that compute to the Apostle Paul? Would he agree with that statement? I don't think he would. I think he would say, you come and you are part of what God is doing, his story. And that is the encouragement for all of us and the challenge to see us as individuals who come together as one in the body of Christ and who are members of one another. And there's wonderful ways that it speaks of, of being involved and, and being devoted and, and being a part of what God is doing. It's exciting. He's actually using you to be a part of his story. That should excite every single one of us because you're thinking, man, what can he do with me? Well, he has something going on with you, but he wants to use you for his story, his church. There's a beautiful story that is happening. Be a part of it. Be a part of what he is doing. And so in the next 50 minutes, 45 minutes we have left, we're going to have lots of different times of worship and readings. And uh, I invite you to take this picture and you can walk over and hand it to someone here on the visual arts ministry. And there are going to be a team of people who are going to be taking that picture and putting it in its right spot. You can see all these have a number on them. And they're going to be putting them all in the right spot. And you will begin to see this, this, this story and this picture grow from lots of individuals. And it looks kind of spotty, but something will grow in a story and a picture. And maybe you might have to come back after the next hour to see it all in total but there is another picture that will appear. And it's only one that you can see is when you are standing back and looking at seeing what God has brought together. His people for his story. Let me pray for us. Dear God, we, we come together and we worship. We worship you and your son because it is your story. We don't come to worship ourselves. We don't come because of what things that we want and it's our agenda that's driving. It is your agenda that drives us in this church and we recognize that and we worship you this morning. 
And so I pray you'd be pleased with your people as we sing songs and as we hear scripture and recite creeds. And even as we take this meal together eventually of what it means to be one and members of one another. What a privilege it is. We thank you. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. My name is Sherry Maines, and I'm part of the body. I'm a part of the body. I am a part. I am part of the body. I am a part. I'm a part. I'm a part of the body. I'm a part. I am a part. I am a part of the body. I am part of the body. I'm Mark Horner, and I'm part of the body. Well, I'm a teacher by profession. I've, I've been teaching uh, in the public schools for, you know, 15 years. Uh, and even before that, I had always enjoyed teaching. And so when this opportunity presented itself, you know, I, to be quite honest with you, I was a bit nervous because teaching high school sophomores is a little bit different than teaching adult men. I feel called to this ministry because, for one, I'm a man and I need to surround myself with other men. I need guys that I can go to war with shoulder to shoulder. And I know that they've got my back. Uh, I also feel called to this ministry because out of it have developed these friendships that I would have never had in my life. And guys are rededicating their life to the Lord, they're rededicating their lives to their, to their families and they're, you know, they're being better husbands and, and co-workers and, and, and they're just starting to spread God's word. And to be used in that manner is, is just the greatest privilege ever. In our world, bent under the weight of sin, Christ gathers a new community. Satan and his evil forces seek whom they may confuse and swallow. But Jesus builds his church, and his spirit guides and grace abounds. The church is the fellowship of those who confess Jesus as Lord. She is the bride of Christ, his chosen partner, loved by Jesus and loving him delighting in his presence, seeking him in prayer, silent before the mystery of his love. Our new life in Christ is celebrated and nourished in the fellowship of congregations, where God's name is praised, his word proclaimed, his way taught, where sins are confessed, prayers and gifts are offered, and sacraments are celebrated. This is the story of the Son of God hanging on a cross for me. And it ends with a bride and a groom at a wedding by a glassy sea. Oh, death, where is your sting? Cause I'll be there singing holy.
If you're able, please stand with me for the reading of God's word. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. And he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father for, of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. 